And all right, so um, we're going to get started here. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know me, I am Jennifer Rodman. I'm one of the counselors here at the high school. I have last names L through R I. And we like to host this little um, senior parent night for any questions that you guys have. Um, we'll go over a lot of information. The PowerPoint is about 13 slides long, and we're just going to go through kind of what we share with um, seniors in general uh, when we meet with them, some information that we've given them, but we like to give it to parents as well so that everyone knows. Um, if you guys do have questions along the way, feel free to put it in the chat. Uh, the other three counselors will be kind of, while we're not speaking, monitoring the chat and uh, will answer questions or the person speaking will be able to answer questions as well. So if you have questions along the way, uh, feel free to put those in there. We'll also have some time at the end that if you guys just have general questions, feel free to um, ask those at the end after we've gone over all the information. We'll stick around for a while afterwards just so that it's open for you guys. So um, we'll get started. So just some kind of general topics for the evening. We're going to go over just different things about graduation, um, college applications, SAT, ACT, financial aid, college visits, NCAA and NAIA, um, the career fair, 21st century scholars, just kind of all that general information. So one of the biggest topics of seniors um, is the graduation. So we do have graduation on May 24th at 10 a.m. Uh, for any of those wondering, we do host it outside on the football field. There are no tickets involved. So any and all are welcome to attend that graduation at the end of the school year. Uh, we want all the families that want to be present and involved there. Uh, to get to that graduation point, we talk a lot with kids about kind of their three big checkpoints. So obviously their biggest one is their diploma. Uh, we meet and track and uh, make sure that kids' schedules are aligned to one of a few different diplomas. They do need a minimum of 40 credits, so we are keeping an eye along the year to make sure that kids are passing their classes, they're enrolled in the right classes. Um, but if you have any questions about that, definitely let us know. All seniors do have to participate and present a senior project. Um, so seniors get a little worried about that, but it is not as big of a deal as it seems. Um, it is a 20 hour service project. So we have a senior project coordinator, Mary Weedman, who works with every single senior to make sure that they uh, can get through that. The biggest hurdle usually is honestly just coming up with an idea because there is so much freedom with it. Uh, and then once they come up with an idea, she works with them on finding a mentor, helping them implement it. So your child should be, um, some students completed it as a junior last year, but most will complete it either this semester or next semester and present towards the end of the semester. And then the last thing is this post-secondary competency. It's basically a we want to make sure they're ready for the outside world. The state has put together a lot of different options for how to check that off. Uh, we as counselors make sure that all seniors are on a path to check that off. So um, we let the kids know whether they're looking at they pass the SAT. Um, some students will take the ASVAB. Uh, for any who don't know, that's one of the biggest ways that students check that off. Um, so if you hear us talk about the ASVAB, that is one of the ways to get that checked off. But if your child is at C9 um, or they earned a lot of dual credits, there's a lot of ways to get those um, that requirement met. And it really just will involve a conversation with the counselor to know exactly how that requirement is being met. Um, but we go over that a lot with students and remind them of the requirements. Um, we do meet with all seniors individually. We've kind of started doing some of that. So some of the students have already started meeting a little bit with us, but we'll really ramp that up in the next week or so um, where we'll start to meet individually with all seniors, but it will take us the month of probably uh, September to get through all of those. So don't uh, fret if your student hasn't met with their counselor by the end of September, we will make sure to get to all of them and discuss all of these requirements along with what their plans are, um, help them out with any questions that they might have uh, for their future of how to fill out college applications or if they're looking at where to get a job or going into the military. We do a lot of um, helping them plan, especially as it gets to be senior year, um, what comes next. 
Um, then I wish I could see this closer because I, uh, let's see. There we go. Uh, so for the college applications, a large majority of our students will um, go and apply for college, whether it's a four-year school or a two-year school like Ivy Tech. So we like to go over and help students with that. The biggest way now that students can apply to schools is called the common application. Uh, a lot of schools, uh, over 900 schools came together and said, here are the general um, things that we all wanna know. We all want to know demographics, your name, your parents' names, things like that. So they came up with this website where they can, a student can fill that out um, and fill out a general application and then add individual schools as needed. Um, and so they, um, you can add in IU and Purdue and things without having to fill out individual applications um, and repeat a lot of information. There'll still be some repeats, but each school still will have its own fee to pay for the application. Um, and there are a lot of uh, recommendation letters in there as well. So it still looks similar just in one solid place instead of going to each individual college website. Every once in a while, there are some individual college application websites that you will have to use for uh, different reasons, such as like Ivy Tech. If your student is looking at going to Ivy Tech, um, they will need to go on their college, that website, uh, and they can apply there. Um, you for those two different ways, there's different ways to get transcripts sent to those colleges. If it is Common App, we will upload their transcript directly without them having to ask. If they go to their individual college website, such as Ivy Tech, they will need to go to Parchment, which we'll talk about here in a little bit of how to do that. Um, and that's how they'll get the transcript. One thing we like to mention is College Go Week. That is September 23rd through 27th this year. There are a multitude of colleges that are offering waivers or fee waivers um, so that it is free to apply during this week. It's a great one, um, especially because college applications get to be expensive sometimes. Uh, so there are definitely ways to get around paying some of those. And that week is one of them. Not every school offers um, fee waivers during that week, but a lot of them do. Um, they do, students do have to go directly to their website in order to take advantage of a lot of those fee waivers. Uh, so take a look at that link when we send it out, or you can even Google College Go Week and see um, the graphic of different colleges that'll offer those free applications during that week. And then the lastly, with college applications and then eventually scholarships, recommendation letters are a big deal. Um, so it's important that students start to request some of those now um, coming to teachers or employers, um, different coaches, us with a resume or a brag sheet, something to give to teachers to say, hey, can you write a letter of recommendation? Here are some of my accomplishments and getting those asked ahead of time. We recommend giving it a teacher or a coach or whoever at least a couple weeks um, to make sure they have time to write a good letter of recommendation for you and then hopefully that will um, give them plenty of time. Let's see, going on to the next page. Uh, college visits. I'm gonna pass that off I think. All right. Ms. Rodman, is my volume okay? Yep. Okay. Hear you. So college visits. Um, but let me introduce myself first. I'm my name is Brian Hansen. Um, this is my first year at Franklin High. Um, I have last names A through D, but I have been doing high school counseling for quite a while. This is year 11 for me. Um, it's all been in, in Indiana. So a lot of what we're going over tonight is stuff that I've dealt with for many years. Um, so college visits, um, you get two college visits um, during the school year. Um, that will not count against your attendance. One thing that does come up is, you know, each semester students are looking to gun for a final exam opt out. Um, college visits do count against that. So if a student really wants to um, qualify for a final exam opt out, you maybe want to be a little bit more sparing with your college visits. But you get two college visits per year. Um, you can do virtual or weekend visits. Um, virtual visits are a nice kind of feeler to see a campus. They got really popular and got the quality of them kind of improved during COVID when people couldn't visit campus in person sometimes. 
um, but a virtual visit, most colleges offer some measure of virtual visit, their weekend visits. And honestly, if you go to a college's website, um, they'll usually tell you somewhere very explicitly what kind of visits they offer. And each college can offer kind of a different variety of visits. Um, some colleges will have you do visits that focus on a specific major. Um, and so th there are some options typically with colleges and what kind of visit you can do. So, and each college can look a little different. So if, you're, if you want to see what Purdue's visits options are, my, my best advice is to go to their website and see what's on there. And that would be the same advice for really any college. Um, I would try to prepare some questions when you go on the visit. Um, you know, what are you looking for in a college? That should be something that you should be asking yourself um, even before you go to visit. And then asking questions of the, the college rep or the tour guide or whoever you might interact with on the visit just to get a sense of, is this the right fit for me? Um, and we have some we have some examples of those that you can go to, um, you know, um, when we post this presentation. But it is good to have kind of in mind, you know, what are the basic questions I want to be asking? Um, what kind of information do I want to be gathering when I'm going on a college visit? I'm ready. Next slide. All right, Parchment.com. Um, I would emphasize really any any senior to create an account in Parchment.com. This is one of the major ways that we send transcripts to colleges, um, the common app being the other one. Um, but if you're not applying to a college that is, is uh, part of common app, or you wanna use your, your transcript to be sent to a scholarship organization, or what, or, any, or you wanna, sometimes some kids wanna just see their transcript themselves through Parchment. Um, Parchment is a good website to use. Um, and it's good to use even after graduation, so your your account lasts after graduation as well. Um, we have directions um, on this slide here on how to create an account, how to order a transcript. But I would say if, if a student gets stuck um, creating their account or kind of trying to navigate Parchment, just come down and see your counselor. Um, we, we've been using Parchment for a long time, and so we kind of know the ins and outs of the website and can show your student what they should be doing when they're wanting to send their transcript to a specific college. Um, we are notified when you ask for your transcript to be sent somewhere. So your counselor is actually the person who fulfills the request that your transcripts be sent to a particular college. Next slide. All right, SAT and ACT. Um, one thing I do wanna make clear, um, your students should have taken the SAT with us last spring. Um, the state tests basically all juniors. Um, so your student likely has an SAT score, um, barring some unique circumstance. Um, but if, if the student is not satisfied with that score, or perhaps they want to take the ACT, um, we don't test seniors at Franklin. Um, we don't have test dates for the SAT or the ACT um, at Franklin High School. However, you can still sign up and register to take either test um, at a nearby high school. So Whiteland will have test dates, Center Grove will have test dates, you could even drive to Columbus or somewhere, they, they have test dates. And so there, there are, are nearby high schools that you can take the tests at. Um, I have seen certainly a, a drop in the amount of students who see a need to take either test in their senior year, simply because most Indiana colleges are test optional now. Um, there, there are some exceptions, you know, Purdue is not test optional, but um, the vast majority of colleges at this point are. And so a, a test score is not exactly necessary for admission. Um, but if, if your student wants to see if they would do well on a test or if they know that they're a good test taker and they know that a test score could really bolster their, their admission and getting into a college, um, then, then I would recommend looking into taking it. I will also say that if your student's looking at out-of-state schools, sometimes out-of-state schools, it really depends on the state, so you're, you're going to want to look into it, but some out-of-state schools are, are not test optional. So there are some states where most schools are still requiring a test score. So again, if you're looking at out-of-state, I would do some homework on that to see, okay, do they want me to take SAT, ACT, or I'm at, are they mostly test, test optional too? So. And there we have links on those slides to to the websites for SAT and ACT to register for a test. So it's a pretty simple process. Again, if your student gets stuck registering for either test, 
they can come down to see us and we can help them get get rolling on that. All right, so I'm talking next. I'm Brian Powers. I'm the counselor for students' last names E through K. I'm talking about the FAFSA or free application for federal student aid. So in the past, it's opened up October 1st is kind of when it's opened up. But this year, it is going to open up December 1st. Last year, it opened up, I mean, several different dates, if I'm being honest. They said it was going to open up on December 31st, and I think it opened up December 31st at 11.30 p.m. or something like that. So there were a lot of issues with it where they just wanted to kind of change it, fine tune it, make it a little bit easier to fill out, which it does seem like they have done that, but they have pushed it back again this year. So it will not be available until at least December 1st. And in order to fill, or if you want to fill this out, you have to fill it out each school year to get the financial aid. We will have um, a couple of, of nights where you can come and get your help filling this out. So the first one is September 12th, and we have someone from Invested who invested who we work with. They are presenting right now to freshmen and junior parents on financial aid. They're going to be here for financial aid awareness night on September 12th, and that's kind of where they go over the fine points or the finer points of financial aid, what you want to look for, uh, the, the FAFSA, different kinds of scholarships, things like that. And they go over that and kind of let you know, hey, here's where you start. Here's the different kinds of, of financial aid, of scholarships. And they even touch on loans a little bit, even though they do try and steer clear of that. And there will also be during the financial aid awareness night, you can fill out or you can set up your FSA ID, which is how you're going to start to fill out the FAFSA. So in order to fill out the FAFSA, you have to have an FSA ID already set up. And that usually takes three or four days for them to kind of make one of those. And so it's easier if you set it up beforehand. So let's say December 1st, the FAFSA opens up and you go in to fill it out, but you don't have an FSA ID, you have to you have to create an FSA ID first before you can go in and fill out the FAFSA and you have to wait for that to start. So on September 12th, they'll also take you through the steps of setting up an FSA ID. In last week's guidance news and notes and this coming week's guidance news and notes is the information you'll need. I believe it is social security number for both people and an email address for both people who are who are trying to set it up, the student and then whoever else is trying to set it up. So that's September 12th. Then on December 18th, we'll have a FAFSA completion night and that's a couple weeks after the FAFSA opens up. December 18th, I'm sure there'll be nothing else on your mind at that point in time and we'll be totally focused on money and spending it at that time anyway. So you might as well figure out how we can save you a little money. And this will be a time when you can come in, you can complete the FAFSA, you can ans answer any questions about it. So this is also like an open house style where you can just come and go as you please. So let's say you've got a question on one part of the FAFSA, you come in, they help you out. Let's say, uh, I don't even know where to start on this. Come on in and they'll help you out with that as well. And then April 10th is the finalizing financial aid night. That's when they'll go over kind of what to look for in the financial aid deals that the schools will give you. They can also go over the, they'll also go over the, the offers that you've received from different schools and say, you may want to ask them about this or what's this, or, or they can show you what this is if you have any questions on that as well. So that's a very good night. And then invested is a resource for paying for college. They're the ones who come and help us out. That'll be in the guidance news and notes, just a link to those websites and, uh, and other information that is also on the counseling website as well. And then also I'm talking about scholarships. So obviously we want the scholarships to be, uh, we want the scholarships to be, oh, I'm sorry. One more thing about the FAFSA is honestly, a lot of times people will say, well, you know, I think my parents may make too much money or anything like that. I always recommend just filling it out because you never know what you're, what you can get in there and it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. The state of Indiana has also said that everyone has to fill out a FAFSA in order to, uh, to 
well, they need to fill out a FAFSA. So that's kind of something that the state of Indiana has wanted us to do, has has put in a place that everyone has to fill out a FAFSA. So it's just in the long run, I think it's it's pretty helpful if we fill that out. As far as the scholarships goes, we have scholarship walls here, a oh, scholarship wall in the counseling office where the paper applications will be. We'll also send them out guidance, news and notes. There's different types of scholarships. So for the colleges, a lot of times, what we recommend for filling out applications is to make sure you do that by November 1st, because that's the merit-based scholarships. And in those scholarships, they have a certain amount of money that they can give out. And for it goes to those people who November 1st who have applied before then, they get a big chunk of that pie. And then whatever's kind of left over is for people after that. So that's something to keep in mind when you're applying for college. Can you apply for college after November 1st? Of course, but it's usually seems to be sometimes best to do that as far as the financial aspect of it goes. Plus it gets a lot off your plate and just let your student enjoy and you enjoy the scene, the student senior year where they can be, where they can, uh, where they can enjoy that. And then uh, there's also athletic scholarships. We have local scholarships. So the Johnson County Community Foundation scholarship will be Will be the Johnson County Community Foundation scholarship will be um, will be out in January, and then once we have those, we can kind of give them out to different school or different students. We'll also be able to apply for those. So different students will be able to apply for those scholarships, and those are our local scholarships. So those are very good as far as. Um, we have, you know, three or four kids apply for it. And sometimes we can give two or three scholarships. So it's very good to get in there and apply for those and apply for as many of those as, as we have. Invested and College Board also does the, um, they do, they have scholarship search engines as well. So they are able to, uh, you can go through those and look for different scholarships and search those. And we have links to those as well. So uh, and then as far as the, there was a question I just saw on there about invested helping with uh, the CSS financial form. I am not sure about that, but they are here right now. So I will go ask them. And because I'm done with presenting for a little bit, I will go ask them and then I will have an answer for that. All right. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Abby Albright. I am uh, one of the new counselors. I have last names RO through C. Um, this is my first year at Franklin. It's also my first year as a school counselor. I'm very excited to be working with an amazing team of seasoned counselors to help me on this journey. But I'm talking about the NCAA and NAIA uh, requirements. So as a senior, by this point, your student should have made an account already with NCAA or NAIA if they intend to play um, a sport in college. NCAA is for the D1, D2 schools, so schools like Purdue, IU. Um, NAIA is more of the smaller schools, um, like your D3 schools, so like a Wabash um, or a Rose Holman. Um, both have different scholarships that they can um, have different financial aid options. Um, but realistically, what we're looking for right now for these is your student needs to have made an account so that we can upload their transcripts because there's going to be um, some coaches that want to look at your student's transcript to make sure they've taken the correct courses um, to make sure that they're eligible to play a sport at the, coll at the collegiate level. Um, sometimes they may want the SAT or ACT score to be sent through that account. Um, if you have any questions about the NCAA requirements or how all that works, uh, please reach out to your counselor. Uh, we will have information we can share with you about that. There's also information, um, more detailed information about it on our website as well. Um, and then for our 21st century scholar students, um, this is a really awesome scholarship. Um, students would have had to apply for this by the end of their eighth grade year. Um, essentially, it is a full ride scholarship to any public university in the state of Indiana. There are some things that you have to complete in order to um, be eligible for this scholarship if you have been approved for it. Um, so you need to earn a core 40 diploma with a 2.5 GPA. It, when we're doing our senior meetings, we'll go over all of that with our students and make sure they're on track. Um, if you are 
a 21st century scholar student, you need to go on to scholartrack.org um, and go through your account. There are a couple of different videos and activities you need to watch. Some of those include like what are student loans and have you filled out the FAFSA? Have you gone on a college visit? Um, they just want to make sure, are you doing things to be prepared for college? Um, once we get through all of those things, you should be all set to go. We're going to have a more in-depth meeting about 21st century scholars sometime in October. Uh, keep an eye out for an email about that to get more information. So for the cap and gowns, of course, very important information because you got to have a cap and gown to look good at graduation. So we'll have uh, the representative from Jostens will be here on October 2nd during coach. That's when they'll get the order forms. Um, they'll get all the, the information on how to do that, on what they need. Really, they just need kind of the cap, the gown, and then the tassel is essentially all they need. There's a lot of extra stuff in there. Feel free to order whatever you want. But for the most part, it's the cap gown and tassel is essentially all they need. We'll have extras in the counseling office. So if they are, if your student isn't here that day or anything, or they lose it, then they can come and get it from the guidance office. And then on October 9th during lunch is when they'll pick up those order forms um, and they can turn, turn it in here. They can also order it online. Like it says at the bottom there, Prices increase the longer you wait, so make sure we get that in. If they've got any questions about that, it can you can feel free to reach out to me, um, and we can I can ask the Justin's representative as well if we can't answer that. So. I think that's pretty much the end of what we have planned to go over. So um, like I said, we'll record, we've been recording this and we'll send out um, the presentation and this video and everything to make sure uh, that we uh, get that out to you guys. And I saw a hand raised to ask a question. Amy? And if it doesn't work, feel free to type it in the chat too. You know. Maybe not. Um, we'll stick around for a while to answer questions about anything that you guys have um, for us. You can also, like it has on there, has our emails on there. So feel free if you have specific questions about your student, their situation, specific things. Um, that we haven't answered tonight because I'm sure there are other questions that you guys have that we just don't always think about including in the presentation. Uh, feel free to shoot us each an email if you have uh, specific questions and we will do our best to answer those or find out um, the answer for you and direct you to who to answer to. Uh, but otherwise, I, we appreciate that you guys came and spent this time. Um, so we will... Um, stick around thanks for coming and we are looking forward to having your student their senior year and getting them to the end and getting them graduated Doesn't look like anybody has any questions, so I'm going to end the recording and end the meeting. Thanks, guys.